Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to do just a little quick project that I've been wanting to do. Everything kind of just fell into place and uh, we'll get to work on that in a second. Uh, real quick, in a couple of days, I'm hoping Tuesday, I'm going to have a really big announcement for you as far as uh, the BB machine gun world is concerned. I can't wait. I've been waiting on this for so long. I can't wait to tell you guys about it. But let's get to this project for now. I think it was last weekend. I was poking around in my shop, just looking for stuff, uh, just seeing what I had. I kind of like to do that every once in a while, just kind of remind myself of what's there. And it came across this. And I have no idea where it came from or anything. Um, but I looked at it and I, I saw all of these diamond bits and I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. And uh, I mean, as far as the tools concerned, I wasn't really too impressed with that uh, just by looking at it. Uh, I don't know how old this is. It could be 20 years old or something like that. But on this little drill, it said 3.6 volts. And I said to myself, there's no way that could have a lithium ion battery in it. So when I took it apart, I wasn't too surprised to see that it had nickel cadmium batteries in it. Three cells at 1.2 volts a piece. Uh, now they say they're 600 milliamps. So when compared to a lithium ion cell, these have the same inner density energy density and voltage that this one um, 14500 has. And then I remembered I had this guy. Now, instead of 600 milliamps, we've got 5000 milliamp hours. And it, it's still the same uh, voltage, 3.7 volts which charges to 4.2 volts. So, uh, instead of 600 milliamps, we're gonna put this in here, and we'll have 5,000 milliamps. So, I'll actually be able to get some work done with this little tool. I remembered I also had one of these single lithium ion cell chargers. Now, this one is built to charge 18650s. There's no reason it can't charge uh, 26 what is this 26 650 <laughs> other than it won't really fit in here so what we're going to do is we're just going to tie into the guts of this thing on the positive and negative and cut the end off of this cord and basically just swap these batteries out and solder the wire onto those batteries. To get this 26650 to fit in here, we're going to have to cut these ribs away. Man, if, I wish I had like some kind of a cordless rotary tool I could do this with. While I'm working on that, I wanted to show you this little vise that I put together the other day. A long time ago, I broke the base. Uh, that allowed you to swivel this vise. It was just cast iron. And I saved the vise to do something with it later. And I just had all this, you know, I've got some scrap metal at home, so I dug through there to see what I could find to fasten it here. And this is just a piece of angle iron that goes uh, under here. It's been under like that, and it just spans that length. And now I've got myself a little somewhat portable vice device. This project is going to take me a lot less time than I thought it was. I might be able to get done with this so fast that I'll actually be able to do the project with this um, cordless rotary drill. Okay, so I've got it uh, two ribs drilled out. I swear I think this was made for this because that fits in there and uh, these ribs keep it from going very far and 
that axis. We got a little happy on this, so there's a little bit of wiggle in there, but a little dab of thermal thermal paste in there, some thermal adhesive in there to smush the battery down on before I stick everything back together. Should keep it nice and snug. I found these barrel connectors. Uh, I've had them for a while. I thought they were going to work on blackbirds, but they don't fit. But they work here. Now, soldering on lithium ion cells isn't the safest thing to do in the world, so um, don't do this. But what's dangerous about it is the entire battery case. I've gone over this before, so I apologize if I'm just repeating myself. But the entire case underneath this layer of insulating wrap is your negative terminal. And where it crimps over, there's a little insulator between that and your positive terminal. So if you get crazy with your solder and it spills over and it solders between the positive and the negative, you're not going to have a good day. The positive side for heat really isn't something I get very concerned about because you've got to go this terminal is raised up off the actual cell. Of course I would be a fool if I were to assume that I wouldn't have any problems uh, going at it as haphazardly as I just did, but we don't have enough wire. I'm going to have to get my wire stretcher out so I can get the motor in position. Okay, so the plan for the charger, I've already got the back off of it. I'm going to drill a hole, I guess, right in here and cut the end off of the charger that came with the tool and just solder the wires onto the charging terminals there and run it out there with that little grommet. Okay, we've got it back together, and the cord on it is really short, so I'm not sure what kind of an angle you're going to get on this, but we're just going to test it, make sure we got everything hooked up right, and we're getting voltage, and we are. So, now we can plug up the tool and see if it catches on fire. Okay. Let's see if this... Yeah, I lost three of the four screws for the back of this. I'm hoping they'll turn up. 
let's see if that changes color when we plug it up and it does so we are charging that 26 650 in there now i got a nice little tool and as far as the wall box the transformer i'm gonna just put this in back on there and then i'll have this for whatever takes six volt dc all right guys and like i said be listening out for that announcement hopefully it's going to be tuesday it's really awesome for us so i'll talk to y'all later